Hi and thank you for choosing Card Studio 2.0. This video shows you how to structure a MyFair Classic CCI encoding file. Start the Smart Card Editor to build the MyFair Classic 1K. The Smart Card Editor automatically installs along with the Card Studio 2.0 Professional Edition software. Let's start a new file. Go to New File and then New. With the Smart Card Editor, you can create encoding templates for MyFair Classic, MyFair Plus, Desfire, UHF Gen 2, and iClass. Select the MyFair Classic 1K. An empty template is created, ready for configuration. First, configure the card settings. You can select the card serial number byte order and choose to enable or disable MAD. MAD stands for MyFair Application Directory and documents a directory-like structure that describes how sectors on a card are used. With MAD, the card encoding structure can be checked using a public key. This helps with selecting a sector when using multiple applications on the same card. For this example, leave both options on the default setting. On the left of the template is a list of 16 individual sectors numbered from 0 to 15. Each sector represents a section of the card that can be filled with data. While each sector holds a total of 64 bytes, not all of that space can be used. Select Sector 0 and check the box Include Sector in CCI. Notice that a grid of squares becomes visible, some white and some are a hashed colour. The hashed squares represent data reserved for either manufacturer information or information that is needed to access the data. For now, we enable Sector 0. Configure access to Sector 0. This may look a bit daunting at first but we'll keep things simple. Next to the fields for key A and key B is a Generate button. Click both buttons to see the series of numbers and capital letters appear. This is the key that applications need to use to access the information in the sector. Sometimes, these keys are defined by the security or payment system you use in your organization. You can add these keys to the fields manually as well. Note that the key will always be the same length, 12 characters. The next couple of drop-down boxes allow you to determine how to use the keys to access your data. For example, you may choose to allow both keys to read the data from the card, but not allow them to write information to it. You may also choose to use just one of the keys to write the data to the card. This allows for an extra level of security in your organization, because you can choose to provide one key publicly and keep the other private. In this example, we will leave all options to their default setting. It is time to add data to the sector. We want to store first name, last name, email address and ID number. Let's start with the ID number. The data will be encoded onto the card using a Print Studio project, so we need to select Dynamic Data in the Data Block section and click Add. That means that we've now reserved a coloured block of data that can hold 16 characters. For the format, we select Numeric as the data will contain just numbers. We changed the left aligned default setting to right aligned, which means that the data block will be filled from the right. Enter ID number in field and notice that the colour of the block has now changed. This is merely to visually distinguish one piece of information from another. 16 blocks are reserved, while we only need 5, so change the length from 16 to 5. Enter a description as a reminder to what this block does, and finally set the encoding setting to UTF 8. We create two more dynamic data blocks for first name and last name. We use the ASCII format for both and set the length to 12 bytes to allow for longer names. Complete the input box for field to make the blocks a distinguishable colour. Set the encoding to UTF-8 and keep the alignment setting as is. We still need to store the email address but are out of space in this sector. Set the email information to Sector 1. Enable Sector 1. Generate keys A and B. Create a dynamic block for email address. We've now ended up with two configured sectors, each holding different types of data from our project. Save your template in either the CCI or XML format. The CCI format allows you to set a password making your template unreadable. If you choose to do this, you will have to enter your password when adding the encoding file to your project.